In this video, we're going to talk about solids of revolution and how to calculate their volumes using a method called either disks or washers. So the idea is we're going to take a region in the xy plane and we're going to rotate it about an axis. So we imagine this region gets rotated as it goes around that axis it passes and creates, passes through or creates a solid, which we call the solid of revolution. So here's an example. I just have some generic function and I'm gonna take the region uh, between the graph of the function and the x-axis for the values x equals one to x equals five. And I've shaded that region here. We're gonna rotate that region or imagine that we rotate the region around the x-axis. And the resulting solid that we'll get looks something like a Christmas tree ornament or maybe a strange looking turnip or onion. And that's what we call a solid of rotation or sometimes it's called a solid of revolution. Uh, and how do we calculate the volume of that? Well, from our previous video, we know that if we can uh, find the area of the cross section, we could slice this solid up into thin slices, estimate the volume of each slice by taking the area of the cross section and multiplying it times the width of the slice, add up all of those volumes, and that would give me an estimate. And then in the limit, we would get an integral. So here our cross sections are circles. And so uh, for each little circular slice that I would take, the area would be uh, just pi r squared. And so the volume of a single slice, so the ith slice, that's what the index i represents. It just tells us that we have an, a number of slices. We have n slices. The ith one has this volume, just take the area and multiply it times the width, which here is delta x. All right, what is that radius? The radius is just the y coordinate on that curve, which is uh, the same as the function value. And so we can approximate the volume by adding up the volume of all n slices. This is a Riemann sum, so as we let the number of slices go to infinity, we get an integral. So let's write down our steps. First thing we want to do is sketch the region which is being rotated. And also we'd like to highlight if it's not the x-axis or the y-axis, we'd like to sketch the axis of rotation. And it's very important that we shade the region. It's not just enough to draw the lines. Obviously, there's a lot of lines uh, when you're done uh, sketching the graph of a function. Which part, which region? A region is a two-dimensional object, and so it needs to be shaded. Then the next thing is, once we know what the axis of rotation is, we're gonna draw a long, thin rectangle and we want the thin long part to be perpendicular to the axis of rotation. And then we're gonna make a note of what the width is. It's delta x or delta y. That's so important because once we understand what the width is, that it's delta x, that tells us three things. It tells us that we're going to be using a dx integral. It tells us that our integrand, so our value for r in this case, has to be in terms of x. And then finally, our bounds of integration must be x values. So we get all of that from drawing this rectangle. So we should always draw that rectangle, make note of its width. That's going to guide us through the rest of the problem. So now we have to determine the value of r. So in this case, r is the y-coordinate of a point on the curve. 
And then depending on whether we have a dx or a dy integral, we'll evaluate one of these two integrals where the integrand is r squared and the bounds of integration are determined by the uh, whether we have a dx or a dy integral. So let's look at an example. We're asked to find the volume of the solid generated when the region enclosed by y equals x squared plus 1, y equals 0, x equals 0, and x equals 1 is rotated about the x-axis. So that's the shaded region right here. And I want to emphasize, shade the region. Shade the region. Uh, so my axis of rotation is the x-axis. Normally, we don't have to highlight that. It's, it's clear where the x-axis is. But just to emphasize, I go ahead and put a green line there. Uh, and then I'm going to draw my rectangle. So the skinny part is perpendicular to, or the long part, is perpendicular to the x-axis, which is our axis of rotation which tells me that the thickness is delta x. And so that will tell me I need to find everything else in terms of x. All right, so this is what this uh, solid revolution would look like. Maybe some kind of interesting coffee table, a pedestal, depending on how you look at it. And what is the radius? Well, if I take a slice there, the radius is going to be determined by that uh, curve, the parabola. And the radius is the distance from the x-axis up to that curve. That's the same as the y-coordinate of the point on that curve. And since our rectangle was delta x, we know we're going to have a dx integral. So I need to find r in terms of x. Well, we have the formula y equals x squared plus 1. So that will be my value for r. So let's go ahead and substitute into our formula there. And uh, before I can take the antiderivative, I'll need to multiply that out. So I'll multiply out x squared plus 1 quantity squared. And now I can just use the power rule to find the antiderivative. I'll keep the pi factored out of the brackets until I've completed the evaluation. I just evaluate from 1 to 0. Um, from now on, when I have 0, uh, when the evaluation for the lower bound is just 0, uh, I'm not going to write that. Uh, I think that with enough practice, we can see that that is clear. And then, uh, with a lot of these, we have to remember how to work with fractions, do the arithmetic there to find that the volume is 28 over 15 pi cubic units. So it's volume, it's cubic units, but we're not going to focus on the units in this class. Let's look at another example. And uh, we have a couple of different things. One is that we have a curve, which is a... Uh, function of y. So x is given as a function of y. And we're also rotating about the y axis. So let's see what the region is. Uh, it's enclosed by this parabola. Uh, y equals 0 and x equals 0. Those are just the x axis and the y axis. And so that's our region. And we've shaded it. So it's very clear what the region is that we're working with. It's going to be rotated about the y-axis, so I'll draw my rectangle. And the width of that rectangle is delta y. So this is going to be a dy integral. So I'll need to have my r value written in terms of y. I'll need my bounds of integration are going to be y values. And so I look at my region. That'll tell me my bounds. What is the smallest y value? In that region, y equals 0. What's the largest y value? y equals 2. So those are my bounds of integration. 
All right. So r is the distance from the y-axis out to the curve, the parabola. And I, run, I want that to be in terms of, of y, because it's a dy integral. And I already have a formula for that curve in terms of y. x is 4 minus y squared. So I don't need to do any work. In fact, it's fortunate that the problem was stated with x as a function of y. So now, once I know r, I said my bounds are going to be from 0 to 2. I can just substitute into the formula. So I put in the place of r 4 minus y squared. As before, I need to multiply that out before I find the antiderivative. And I'll just use the power rule to find the antiderivative and evaluate that between 0 and 2. And again, I can see that when I do the evaluation, when y equals 0, I'm not going to get any contribution. So um, I still need to work out the arithmetic uh, with the remaining terms to get 256 over 15 pi cubic units for the volume. So far, every uh, example we've seen, the uh, solid of revolution was indeed solid. But it could have a hole in it, or it could have part of it taken out. In which case, we can still calculate its volume. But when we slice it, there's going to be a hole in our disk. There's going to be a hole uh, in that circle. But that hole is going to have the same center, and it's going to be a circle. And so it's fairly simple geometry to come up with a formula for the area of what remains. What remains is called an annulus, but we call it a washer. It looks like the washer that we, you would use with nuts and bolts. And so we just take the area of the big circle. We subtract off the area of the small circle. So the big circle, we call its radius the outer radius. And we use an uppercase r to represent the outer radius. And for the small circle, we use a lowercase r. And that is the inner radius of the washer. And so doing a little bit of arithmetic and algebra, we see that we can factor out the pi. And what's left is the outer radius squared minus the inner radius squared or big R squared minus little r squared. So if we have a solid of revolution, so imagine, for example, that if I were to take this region bounded by the parabola y equals 2x squared and the line y equals 2x and rotate it about the x, I'm sorry, the y-axis, then it's going to be hollow. This The solid of revolution is going to be hollow. There's actually a cone removed from the inside of it. And so if I slice it perpendicular to the axis of rotation, the solid is going to give me a, the slice is going to give me a washer with an outer radius determined by the parabola and an inner radius determined by the line. So the technique I'm going to use is going to be essentially the same as what I did with disks um, with the following differences. I'm going to have an outer radius and an inner radius. And the formula I'm going to use is going to be the capital R squared minus small r squared as my integrand. So let's work out an example using this method of washers. We have something similar to what I just showed, but now we have a square root function. And we have a line. And we're asked to rotate the region contained by those two curves about the x-axis. So again, I shade the region. 
I draw a rectangle which is perpendicular to the x-axis. Now, it doesn't touch the x-axis because I have that inner radius, but it's still perpendicular, and I can see its thickness is delta x. So I will have a dx integral. My bounds of integration should be x values, and looking at my region, I can see that the smallest x value in that region is 0, and the largest x value is 4. So my bounds of integration will be from 0 to 4. And then my integrand, so both my inner radius and outer radius, have to be written in terms of x. All right, so I can see that the outer radius is determined by the square root curve. The inner radius is determined by the line. So for the outer radius, that's the distance from the x-axis up to the square root curve. And so that would just be the y-coordinate of a point on that uh, square root curve. And I'm told that y equals 1 plus radical x. So for capital R, or my outer radius, I'll use 1 plus radical x. Now for the inner radius, that would be the distance from the x-axis to a point on the line. And uh, the vertical distance, that's the same as the y-coordinate of that point. And we have a formula uh, for that y-coordinate in terms of x. It's 1 plus half x. So now I've got both my inner radius and my outer radius. And I said that bounds would be from x equals 0 to x equals 4. So I'm ready to put that into my formula. I'll need to uh, multiply out both of those terms. And I need to be careful with this subtraction, because even after I multiply out 1 plus half x squared, I'm still subtracting that whole thing as a group, the whole expression. And so even after I multiply it out, I'll have to remember to put these parentheses in so that I distribute the minus sign to every term before I collect the like terms. So collecting the like terms, I can see that I'll have a 1 minus a 1. I'll have an x minus an x. So really, I'm only going to be left with two terms. I'll have the 2 radical x, which I'll write as 2x to the 1 half power. So it's easier to use the power rule. And then I'll be subtracting 1 fourth x squared. Now I can go ahead and find the antiderivative and evaluate that between 0 and 4. So again, I have to remind myself how to work with fractions. Remember that when you're adding or subtracting fractions, you need to have a common denominator. And so my common denominator here could be 3. If I simplify, remember, 4 goes into 12 3 times, 4 goes into 64 16 times. And when I work that out, I get 16 over 3 pi. And again, they're cubic units. Now, in our next example, we're going to take the same region, but we're going to rotate it about the y-axis. So, shade the region. But now when I draw a rectangle which is perpendicular to the y-axis, I see the thickness is delta y, which tells me that I'm going to have a dy integral. And it tells me that my bounds of integration should be y values. So the smallest y value in this region is 1. The largest y value is 3. So my bounds of integration are going to go from y equals 1 to y equals 3. And finally, I'll need to write both my inner radius and my outer radius in terms of y. So you can see that the inner radius is determined by the square root curve this time. 
the outer radius is determined by the line. And they both have to be written in terms of y. So that tells me that I should solve both of those original equations for x. So if I want to know what is the x-coordinate of a point on this curve in terms of y, well, I would first subtract 1 and then square both sides. And that gives me x equals parentheses y minus 1 quantity squared. So that tells me that the and that will help me find the inner radius. And I'll need to solve the equation of the line for x as well. Let me go ahead and multiply every term by 2. And I'll get 2y equals 2 plus x. So x is 2y minus 2. So my outer radius determined by the line, written that the line is x equals 2y minus 2. So the outer radius is 2y minus 2. The inner radius is determined by the square root function. And so the inner radius is y minus 1 quantity squared. I already said that my bounds of integration are go for, will go from 1 to 3, so I can put everything into my formula. And I could multiply this out and work it in terms of y. But notice what I've done here with my outer radius. I went ahead and factored the 2. And I got 2 parentheses y minus 1. And then in my inner radius, I have quantity y minus 1 squared. So we could save some work if we made a u substitution here. Like I said, it's not necessary, but it saves us some algebra if I were to use the u substitution u equals y minus 1. du equals dy, so there's no additional work to be done there. And then we even get nicer bounds, because when y equals 1, u equals 0. It's always good to have a lower bound of 0. And when y equals 3, u will equal 2. And now in terms of u, I have a much simpler integrand. I still have to do some squaring, but uh, there's only a single term in, in each set of brackets. Uh, and by the way, the geometric interpretation of this u substitution is to say all I'm going to do is take this entire solid and shift it down onto the x-axis. The volume wouldn't change if I shift this solid down. And that's what this algebraic u substitution does. So let's go ahead and square every term, use the power rule to find the antiderivative, evaluate that using my bounds of integration in terms of u. Um, just a little uh, arithmetic trick here. When I saw I had 32 over 3 and 32 over 5, I went ahead and factored out the 32 so that inside I would just have 1 third minus 1 fifth, and it's easier to work with those smaller fractions. So 1 third is just 5 over 15, and 1 fifth is 3 over 15. And I get, as a result, 64 pi over 15. In our last two examples, we're going to use an axis of rotation, which is neither the x-axis nor the y-axis. And so we have to be a, um, pay close attention when we're finding the uh, values for r capital R and lowercase r. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a region which is enclosed by y equals x squared and y equals 1 in the first quadrant. And then we're going to rotate that about the line y equals negative 1. So y equals negative 1 is the red line here. 
So horizontal line. The region that we need to shade is the region between y equals 1, so th this horizontal line here, and the parabola, but only in the first quadrant. So this is our region that is going to be rotated not about the x-axis, about, but about the line y equals negative 1. So this is what it's going to look like. Um, again, I'm not sure how to describe that particular shape. On the outside, it looks like a cylinder, but then we have cut out a piece from that, that cylinder. So if I draw my uh, rectangle in the region perpendicular to the axis of rotation, I see that the thickness is delta x. So now let's figure out what our outer radius and inner radius is. Well, in this case, the outer radius is always 2. The distance from the axis of rotation out to that line, uh, y equals 1, is always 2 throughout the entire region. The inner radius, though, is determined by the graph of the parabola. And the inner radius really has two parts. We have to go from that red line all the way up to the curve. Well, there's going to be this part where I always have to go that distance 1, and then I have to go from the x-axis to the curve. And that would be the y-coordinate, and the y-coordinate is the same as y equals x squared. So our inner radius is 1 plus x squared. So once I've determined the value for the outer radius and the inner radius, the formula doesn't change. I'm still going to have the same pi uh, on the outside, capital R squared minus lowercase r squared on the inside. We said this will be dx, so I should have had some bounds of integration there, so let me go ahead and put those in there. I'm going from a to b. These are x bounds, and that's just going to be 0 to 1. So we'll go from 0 to 1, outer radius squared minus inner radius squared. I'll have to go ahead and multiply out the inner radius first. Remember to keep that in parentheses. Then go ahead and collect the like terms before I find the antiderivative and evaluate between 0 and 1. So write everything with a common denominator, and we come up with 32 over 15 pi. So in our last example, we're going to take that same region, but we're going to rotate it about the line x equals 2. That is a vertical line. It's a vertical line. So. It's a similar type of solid, but we're going to have our uh, thickness of our rectangle is going to be delta y. So everything is going to have to be written in terms of y. The outer radius, we can see, is constant. The outer radius is just going to be the distance from the, in this case, the y-axis to the axis of rotation, and that is always going to be two units. The inner radius is where we're going to have to be careful, because the inner radius is determined by the parabola, but it's different from what we did in example five. So, again, outer radius, constant two. So the distance between the axis of rotation and this line, vertical line in our region, which is uh, the, goes along the y-axis. So that distance is always 2. But for the inner radius, 
we want this distance from the axis of rotation to the curve. Well, in order to get that distance, what we know about the curve is we can say we know the x-coordinate of the curve, the distance from the y-axis out to the curve is the x-coordinate. So I can easily solve y equals x squared to get x equals radical y. So this distance from the y-axis to a point on the parabola is radical y. But that's not the distance I want. The distance I want is the distance from the axis out to that curve. So what I need to do is take the distance to the x-axis, which is 2, I'm sorry, to the y-axis, which is 2, and then subtract off the bit in the region to get 2 minus radical y. So our inner radius is 2 minus radical y. Again, that was the distance from the axis of rotation out to the outer edge of the curve and then we of the region and then we subtracted off the distance inside the region here and I'm left with what I want which is the distance from the axis of rotation to the curve. Now that I have my inner radius and my outer radius. The bounds should be in terms of y. And uh, so again, the bounds are very simple, 0 to 1. And I can go ahead and put that into my formula. After I put them in, I still have 0 to 1 as my bounds. Multiply that out. Remembering to keep that in parentheses after I multiply it out so I have the correct sign. 4 minus 4 is 0. Minus a minus will give me a plus 2 radical y. But I'll write that as 2y raised to the 1 half. And then I'll have a minus y. All right, so um, now I can find the antiderivative and evaluate that, do the arithmetic to get 5 sixths pi cubic units for the volume. So we'll be learning another method uh, for finding the volume of solids of rotation in our next video.